From Chesapeake, Virginia, the Lighthouse 100.1 presents Sports Scene. Sports Scene features local, regional, and nationally acclaimed guests and excellent interviews. Follow Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Now here is Greg Bickaveras. Sports Scene presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Sports Scene Midweek Online and Saturday on the radio on WPMH AM 1010. 100.1 FM and tune in.com by typing WPMH in the search bar. Greg Bick of Aris along with Colleen. Tell your friends about Sports Scene. Twitter at Greg Bick. And you can see the rest of my Twitter handles on GJBTV.com, including typing Greg Bick, G R E G B I C, or the YouTube search bar for our YouTube channel as well. Thank you to our military and for our police. Guest lineup presented by GJBTV.com. Phone line presented by the Newport News Greek Festival, August 28th through August 30th. Remember, folks, drive through only NewportNewsGreekFestival.org. Hope to see you there. NBA is going on. Major League Baseball in full gear. With or without fans, it's still going on. We shall see how football evolves, but no high school football in Hampton Roads in 2020. So everybody be safe. Great interviews, excellent guests, business segments, highlights, commentary, what teased me off. Thank you for listening to Sports Scene. We love our regulars, tourists who listen online and on the radio. Stay tuned. The Newport News Greek Festival will take place August 28th through August 30th on the grounds of Saints Constantine and Helen Greek Orthodox Church. The entire event will be a drive through edition, and we appreciate your continued support. Eat, drink, and celebrate authentic Greek culture on the peninsula. Celebrating a taste of Greece in Newport News with our drive through For more, log on to NewportNewsGreekFestival.org. Opa! Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Email B-I-C-O-G-B at Hotmail.com. Now back to Greg Bickavaris in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studios. And welcome back to Sports Scene. Greg Bickavaris, glad you're with us. At Greg Bick on Twitter, at Greg Bick on YouTube, right here on WPMH. Pleased to be joined by former Channel 13 correspondent from WVEC, Catherine Barrett. How are you, Catherine? I'm great, Greg. It's great to hear from you. You too. Always a pleasure to talk to you as well. So let's uh, talk about some of your highlights, uh, your career before WVEC. My career before WVEC, well, I started in radio news. As a graduate of Penn State in speech common broadcasting, I went to radio news and worked at several different uh, radio stations, anchoring news, reporting news, and getting a real good feel for the fact that I'd like to eventually move out of radio. But you know what, Greg, one of, the, one of my jobs was working for a radio station in the big city of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, for a radio station owned by Merv Griffin at the time, mm-hmm. and it was country music station, and they had me not only anchor the new news, but I hosted an hour-long live uh, radio talk show in the evening. And you know what? Had I only known what talk radio was going to become, but I didn't realize it. I didn't know back then. So I just kept in news, moved on. But that was kind of funny. You could have done your own advice show. Who knows? I could have done... I don't know what I could have done something. <laughs> All right. This segment is brought to you by C.P. Shuckers, local tradition on Shore Drive, Pacific Avenue. People love their delicious food, great appetizers, steak bites, sandwiches, burgers, all the games on TV. Go by and see Matt, Mark, Chef, Leon. For more, go to cpshuckers.com and like them on Facebook. Of course, you were at Penn State during the heyday of Joe Paterno. Great football team is back in the 70s. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, one of the... Highlights of my um, time there was we the team lost in the Sugar Bowl, I think it was, and um, that I think that was for a national championship. Not quite sure, but I think it was. And I went to greet the bus when the guys when the team came back, and I thought there'd be like so many people there, but it was freezing cold, and there weren't very many people there. And I ran up to Joe and gave him a kiss and said. We still love you. Like, like that was like the stupidest thing in the world to say. But it's anyway, all, it's all good. Yeah, he was a, he was definitely a legend. Of course, I love the uniforms, blue and white. Absolutely. So you talk about WVC, and I gotta admit, back when you were there for several decades, you, the late Jane Gardner, you know, the uh, Joe Folks, the weatherman, Brad Face, so many people that stayed and sustained. You knew their names. And today, it seems like other than the anchors, at all the stations, 
Catherine, you can barely remember any of the reporters' names. Was it more that they stuck out back then, or there was no social media back then? I think it's a combination, Greg. I think you're on a couple of a couple of things right there. But one of the things I can say that was special to WVEC and also to this and also to this market, a couple of things. You know, I would say that most of us in my age group, not that I was in the Joe Folks age group, come on now, Greg. Uh-huh. But um <laughs> but um we all came in that stage of our lives, um, after we'd worked at a few other stations, and we thought we'd be here, or uh, many of us thought we'd be here two years and then move on, like like a lot of people did back then. A two-year contract, you know, get some more experience under your belt and move on. But we found a couple of things, and one is, first of all, in Hampton Roads, it is a medium-sized television market, but it really has some major market news. We got here and found out, oh, wow, we can occasionally go out on a Navy ship. We can, as a matter of fact, I did so many stories on aircraft carriers and, and other ships that I had some Navy pilots sort of envious that, whoa, you've done way more CODs than I have, and I'm a pilot, you know. There's, so there is like that big market feel. And at WVEC, there was also this, I know it sounds really corny, Greg, but this sort of family that, that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and and we maintain contact to this day. Absolutely, and of course, a lot of y'all stood out, and back then it was really just TV, radio, a little bit of print, and of course, magazines. It really wasn't much media at all in the 70s or the 80s, other than that, no internet. And the one thing I have a problem with today's reporters is they're constantly looking at their phone while they're doing a story. You guys didn't have any phones back then, and you still had to go on camera and off camera and execute it with tape segments very well. Well, thank you very much. Um, But I'm sure that there are technical reasons why they are looking at their phones. They're looking at their ins and out cues, and and I think it makes it a little bit more polished than when we were ad-libbing and winging it. A lot of people think think or thought back then that we had, like, teleprompters out in the field. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. You tried to memorize, and you tried to hit your role cue that you had given to your producers earlier, which is the last few words that you're going to say so that they know when to roll the tape mm-hmm. back at the station. Yeah, you know, we do interviews on TV and radio, never had a teleprompter. I mean, that's a lot of, uh, in reporting, of course, when you're in the studio, you have to have a teleprompter or being an anchor. You have to. But when it goes bad, Catherine, as you know, it can be very awkward for the anchor. <laughs> well, pa- paper scripts are always a good thing to have mm-hmm. today. I just, you know, hope and pray that the iPad doesn't crash or <laughs> stuff like that because when your prompter crashes and you are just, you're doing your best to tap dance without letting anybody know that it's all crashing down around you. Fortunately, that doesn't happen too much. Right, of course. I still like to write my notes and my daily things down on paper. I feel better when I write things down as opposed to the computer. I love the computer, but I still like to write things down. But Definitely a TV news has changed. You see some anchors that have sustained for a long time, including one of your former colleagues, uh, Regina Mobley. You've seen Barbara Sierra work at all three stations since uh, the, the dawn of time. But, uh, you know, it just a lot of people have sustained. Scott Cash, your, your former yeah. colleague at Channel 13. But others have evolved and gone on to own their own businesses and do other things because when you work for a station or a company like that, or any media organization, you got to feed the beast, feed the, uh, you know, the sales department. You got to feed the management. You know, you're always handcuffed. You know, a lot of uh, people do not like to work nights and weekends. That becomes an issue as they get older. And I think you're right. You, you you're, see, you're right, and absolutely, you do have to, and you do have to feed the beast. You got that right. Every morning, no matter what you did the day before, what, no matter how traumatic or emotional. Uh, your story might have been you get to start fresh every day and the managers say, well, what's your story idea for today? Yeah, you're constantly like yesterday never on. happened. We're on to a new day. Let's go. You're, you're right. You're right. Talking to Catherine Barrett right here from uh, formerly from Channel 13 as well. Talk about uh, some of the projects you're dealing with today. You do a lot of stuff on websites. You're very involved with tennis. You have a lot of projects outside of broadcasting. Of course, you do voiceovers for, for my company as well. And some on-camera stuff in the past. Uh, Tell us what Catherine Barrett's doing today. Well, um, what I'm doing today is um, 
I had been writing some magazine articles uh, for Health and Wellness magazine, but unfortunately that was a victim of a lot of the, you know, print media is no longer, and that was one of the victims uh, written for Inside Business, which is a business, um, you know, publication, but, you know, writing news and writing medical stories, writing business stories, if you kind of look at it that it all boils down to it's about people, you can write different topics if you look at it from that point of view. Um, you know, I've been emceeing and moderating, moderating some programs on health topics for like, oh, I don't know, like TCC and um, Jewish Family Service and LifeNet. I, that was a big public health forum on organ transplantation that I moderated and I've been seen on camera a little bit doing EVMS spots a couple of years ago and mostly off camera, as you mentioned, doing voiceovers for videos and commercials from everything from like Department of Defense contractor videos for congressional representatives to when you and I did a radio commercial for Heidenwood Pharmacy in Newport News. Actually, that was TV. Give yourself some credit. Oh, that, that was that's TV. That's right. That was a TV commercial. You did the audio only, which makes you think like it's radio. But um, no, we could still definitely use that for radio. But that was. Um, oh, that's right. That's right. It was my voice, but it was on TV. That's right. Right. Absolutely. So and talk- I love that pharmacist who is actually on camera. She's a, she's great. <laughs> yeah, you got to go by and see her. She's there every day, but Thursday. So I'm going to one of these days when I'm up there. I'm going to stop in and say, "Do you recognize this voice?" <laughs> yeah, but make sure you plan something in the evening. But she doesn't get there till three. So. Oh, right. good. Okay. Well, that's that's good to know. But, you know, it's been, uh, you know, I think back to so many things that, you know, they say this, this biz- in this business, and it's kind of a cliche, but you're kind of like you have a front row seat to the, win- you know, you're a window on the world. And there's just been so many fascinating people that I've been able to interview. And whether you're, um, you know, politics aside, when you interview world leaders, it's just, it, it's, you know, it's, like George Bush and John Glenn and so many, so many um, notable people that I've interviewed over the years and, and then to so many others like, you know, families who've been struggling with various diseases and illnesses and you get to tell their story. Right. We're going to talk. Really fascinating career. We're going to talk more about that in the second segment with COVID and, um, you know, and we're going to tease it, not talk about it now, you know, how the tragedy in Virginia Beach in May of 2019, you know, of course, it was still front and center, but it kind of got evaporated with the COVID here for the proper uh, memorials for 2020. And we'll talk more about that in the second segment with Catherine Barrett. But again, you know, a lot of reporters, they, they hit their shelf life, Catherine, and they evolve. They evolve from having to run and constantly catch their breath doing a story for, like I said, management, and they evolve into their own projects where they control their time. It seems like today, you know, you look back at it, you almost have to do it when you're in your 20s, 30s, and 40s because it's difficult to give up that type of chunk of time, no matter what type of money it is, as you get older. Boy, you know, it sounds like you're talking a little bit about me. Anybody. (laughs) When I came to this market and was uh, came to this market to actually – to co-host a show with Joe Flanagan called Tidewater Evening, and um, that was short-lived, and we both moved into news, and then you do general assignment, and then when it, um, actually when Jane Gardner left the station to go to Channel 3, the, um, the health reporter position was open, and I said, I can do that, um, and kind of made it mine and really treated it, I treated it like a news um reporting job like a not just a disease of the day but i really actually did read the new england journal and 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 jama and really stayed up and tried to find trends and then a way to localize that trend and one of those believe it or not i got really interested in the mid 90s um there was this ebola outbreak in a i know this sounds off the wall but it's true it was an ebola outbreak among um research primates in a lab in Northern Virginia, in Reston, actually. And that got me into just, there was a book called The Hot Zone. It was just really fascinating, and I wanted to learn more about diseases. And that kind of led me to my whole public health interest in um, epidemics. And I thought, okay, what's the next pandemic going to be? 
what are, you know, what is, it was really fascinating. And that took me, they let me do a series on, they called it a crazy name, they called it scary disease. No, they called it what's out there. Ooh, and put, put scary music under it. But it, I was, I was able to develop that into not only looking at the yellow fever epidemic of 1855, which, oh my gosh, are there similarities uh, to what's happening now, um, but also going to New York City, and I, you know, we did a stand-up with the World Trade Center towers um, behind us. We were standing in, I guess, Brooklyn? Is that where it is? Yeah, with the um, skyline behind me, mm-hmm. and saying, all it takes for the next epidemic to become a pandemic is someone to get on a plane with a new disease or new virus and get on a plane and bring it to this country. Mm, Sure happened. All right, we're going to take a short break, come back with more with Catherine Barrett, formerly of WVEC, after these messages on Sports Scene. Sports Scene, Hampton Roads' premier interview show with Greg Bicaveras, each Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11. And you look at that, 4-4 four and four at home, which is just average, 4-3-1 and one on the road. I mean, you're not going to win any games like that. They were not the same team after they beat the Packers, yet the Packers were a totally different team. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter, at Greg Bick, and listen weekly as Greg interviews distinguished guests with excellent commentary and insight. Sports Scene, Saturdays at 10 a.m. on the Lighthouse 100.1 FM. You are listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. Now, back to Greg. All right, back to Sports Scene right here at Greg Bick on Twitter, at Greg Bick on YouTube, Twitter as well, and, of course, social media. You can uh, friend me on Facebook, too. Talking to Catherine Barrett right here. Catherine, of course, I mentioned the um, tragedy in Virginia Beach down by City Hall. Of course, uh, that's been kind of superseded this year by the pandemic. Absolutely. And... It, you have a tragedy, you have a crisis, um, you know, and other other um, cultural issues also going on right now. Mm-hmm. This is a it's a wow it's a wow time to be in news. I mean, I'm glad I'm not the one making decisions and management about what gets covered every day because it's so difficult. Just imagine, right? Because you remember Greek Fest in 1989, and that happened in Virginia Beach, right there on Atlantic Avenue. Let's just hope for civil times for everybody on both sides of the water and throughout the country and the world. Absolutely. Actually, I was standing, yep, and what you just mentioned, I was standing on a, uh, I was covering that, I was standing on the top of the parking garage. Um, I was so naive back then. I was watching, uh, actually, we had some police with us on top of the parking garage. We were watching police officers march down um, Atlantic Avenue, and I had to look at the officer next to me and said, what does police sweep mean? I mean, hmm. I didn't even know. Hmm. But anyway, that was kind of one of my... My uh, viewpoints was from parking garage on high, taking hmm. video of it. Yep. Let's. I love the fact that you use the word civil. Please, let's be civil. What happened to the fact that we can have differing opinions and still be civil? Right. I mean, you see the grocery stores. I mean, I've seen people get hostile when you're six feet away and are not six feet away at workforces, not wearing your mask. So unfortunately, this has brought a lot of uh, fear and ugliness in people. And let's try to get back to better times that it's, we that we all had. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. I'm just a big believer that this is a public, this pandemic is a public health issue. It's a health issue. Of course, that's the health reporter and medical reporter and me speaking after having, you know, researched so many different viruses and diseases and illnesses. And it's, it's a public health emergency. And if wearing a mask helps stop this virus, jump from one person to the next, what is wrong with wearing a mask? Yep. To me, it's, it's all about health. Yep. Put it in the washing machine if it's cloth and just do it again the next day. Talking to Catherine Barrett right here as well. And you mentioned pharmacy and you went to health reporting on channel 13 i guess that uh you know a lot of women know about uh, pharmaceutical stuff i can ask you know uh, my like ex-wife or a friend of mine a neighbor about a certain pill she'll know exactly what i'm talking about a lot of men aren't that quick to know you know what nyquil does for example or what uh you know tylenol does but i think a lot of women with with kids 
understand it so they have a better grasp for pharmaceutical stuff than most people do. Well, you know who makes the most um, health decisions in a family is the woman. You're it's the, just yeah. a fact. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, you've been the health reporter, so you obviously know that. So, yes, but it's it's amazing, you know, what you can learn going to a pharmacy. It's almost like going to a museum of just everything. <laughs> well, pharmacists, they uh, have a lot of education behind them, and um, they're very good at, at knowing lots of stuff if you have a question, that's for sure. Well, you're very uh, much a tennis enthusiast. You mentioned sports, too. Of course, you work with some uh, sports people at all the stations you've worked at, you know. Of course, we mentioned. Yeah, oh, yes. Sure. Scott, Scott Cash and I and, and Brian Smith, his team, uh, we had a very thin wall in between our two offices. Mm-hmm. So anyway, no, we've been friends for a real long time. Um, I always love once in a while getting to do a sports story um, on the air. And it usually had a, it had a health or medical you know, reason for me to be talking to somebody. Like when Jim Palmer came to town, he's a Hall of Fame baseball guy. Right. Right. Jim Palmer? Former Oriole, yes. Oriole, that's it. I knew you were going to know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't remember why he was here. He was represent the American Diabetes Association or something. Don't, don't quote me on that. I have, I, I have no memory of why he was here or why I was there um, interviewing him, but it had something to do with an awareness um, program. And, you know, and this is what I did with Jim is I could have just done that interview yeah, why are you here? Tell me about, you know, your awareness campaign, and then done a little story. But while I was there, I said, you know, I, and this is what I, I always encourage younger reporters to take it to the next level, if you can. Just think of something. Do something else other than the expected. I said, so while we're here, I said, you know, I know, like, nothing about baseball. I said, would you teach me something? I just happen to have a baseball with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, yeah, you mean like how to pitch? I'm like, yeah, how to pitch. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and we did this little bit on camera where he taught me how to throw a baseball. Very nice. Well, not that I remember, but it was fun at the time. And Gail Devers, I interviewed her. At the time, she was an Olympian. She held the world record for in track. She was the known as the fastest woman in the world at the time. Mm-hmm. And again, she was here for some other, you know, some reason I don't recall. But what I do remember is asking her, how do you explode off the blocks so quick, by the way? And she mm-hmm. just kind of looked at me, and I said, we don't have any blocks right here, but would you show me how you do that? And indeed, she taught me how she explodes off the blocks. So anyway, fun stuff. In Even if you don't know anything about the sport, you know, it's about people, and you can, you can always develop it into a story there's always a story there right and that, my advice would be the same thing my dad told me he says evolve from sports i mean if i would have done just sports okay i would have done radio and tv but you know i do commercials i do media buying i do production you know everything you can't just be a one person shop you have to evolve in life and life is doing multi things multitasking multifacet that makes you more marketable to business and really you know interviewing an athlete is great but i'd rather much get closer to a business owner maybe we've all evolved but uh, i think the key in life is evolving well yeah and, and the key to being successful in what in what you do and in reporting is to be well rounded mhm you have to and be. also to know how to punt when you need to if you don't really know what's going on around you right um you can maybe use some experience that you, some other experience in life to be able to figure it out. Oh, yeah. Like no tides baseball. You mentioned sports. I mean, so this pandemic has hurt a lot of businesses, sports businesses. It's just a, you know, you know, way of life of, you know, walking to a restaurant or grocery store or whatever. Can Uh, you even imagine? mm -mm. Can you even imagine? Like you mentioned that I am a big fan of tennis and, um, have have been for a long time. I'm probably a better fan than I am player right now, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I've had the opportunity to write a lot about tennis for USTA.com and go to different tournaments and um, write about players. But can you imagine these professional players right now? They're still responsible for paying their team. They have, I mean, what are, it's, it's just so, well, they're, I can't they're, imagine the economics of, if you look at it just through the lens of tennis, not even, you know, and then broaden it out to all these other sports. It's a business. 
right? Oh, yeah. Well, they're making their money off sponsors and television. I mean, um, the baseball and basketball are going on now because of television, not because of fan revenue, that's for sure. Uh, Mm. uh, Outback in Kempsville, one of our good friends, Mike and the staff there, spacious, nice dining area, bar, lunch and dinner daily. They're open seven days a week uh, through the pandemic. Burger, steak, soup, salads, appetizers, pasta, chicken ribs, all the essentials you need. Dine in or carry out. Visit them at 1255 Fordham Drive in Virginia Beach. Give them a call at 523-4832 for you locals and tourists. Outback in Kempsville. Just Google it. You'll find it. You'll love it. Clean, nice place air condition to get some really good food and good dessert too final few moments here with um Catherine barrett formerly of channel 13 you're a big fan of pets too and i want to say something um to evolve this too as well it's it's nothing worse than seeing a pet in either the hot or the cold being left outside or being neglected I, it's it's a horrible thing you know i've always liked smaller pets but it doesn't matter big small they need to be hydrated like anybody else well thanks Thankfully, there are new laws um, directing exactly what you're saying right now, that you, you cannot do that. So especially in this heat wave we're having, record-setting heat, yes, absolutely, please. Um, yeah, my I have a little psycho cocker, I call her psycho cocker spaniel that we got from Virginia Beach Animal Control. And, um, you know, she's like the princess of the house. I just can't imagine that that animals are not treated as well as she is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. They all need to be. Yeah. As I'm... well as all our cats that we've had over the years, as mm-hmm. well as another Cocker Spaniel we adopted. We lost her last year. and mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Adopt, don't shop. You're right. We all got something with, with pets. I mean, I grew up with rabbits, of all things. You know, my aunt liked cats. I mean, some people like dogs. But regardless, you have to be, you know, polite to pets like you are to humans i mean uh you know i guess the bad side is when you see you know pit bulls that are attacking people but i guess really Catherine, you know this better than anybody it's how the owner trains the pet correct yes and uh, that obviously means that i haven't quite done something right because every time someone comes come to the front door my psycho dog goes psycho and it's probably not the dog that has the issue it's probably the owner but we'll just slide right past that mm-hmm. i have tried i've taken her to many trainers i and then at some point you just say you know i i don't know if i can ever overcome this issue mm-hmm. without um uh who is the guy on tv uh out in california i can't remember his name right now i need him to come to who has a tv show on training animals i need him at my house or maybe Dr. Phil, too, for the pet, you know. <laughs> maybe Dr. <laughs> Phil for me, how yeah. to handle my pet. Yeah. Well, I want to leave you on this note on Hampton Roads. It seems like we're a great community, but sometimes I'm not a big firm believer in seven cities. Was You know, there's also Suffolk. There's Franklin. They got to feel included, too. You know, Suffolk and Franklin are not far from Chesapeake. Then you got, of course, Emporia is way out there. Then you got Williamsburg, Yorktown. So really that whole seven, our our definition of Hampton Roads, coastal Virginia, which I don't like. I'm more of a Hampton Roads person. But But tell me how you really feel. (laughs) Well, I mean, I like Hampton Roads. I grew up, you know, thinking, you know, Tidewater as well, Peninsula, Southside. We've been called a lot of different names. Tidewater, Uh uh-huh. But it it seems like we've still had an identity crisis, and it still seems like people from the Southside don't like driving to the Peninsula and vice versa. Heck, some people from Virginia Beach don't want to go to Norfolk. Well, you know, when I moved here in 1982, <clears throat> I know it was a while ago, um, you, know, you know, there was a joke about you need a, do you need a visa to go from the south side to the peninsula and vice versa? Yeah. And I don't think it's changed all that much, unfortunately. I know there have been a lot of different attempts, and there's still an attempt to find an identity that someone outside Hampton Roads knows. That's, that's part of this the problem with the name Hampton Roads is that if you're from here, you know what it is, but if you're not, you find it on a map, you can't. It's very challenging. You know, our Penn State alumni chapter, of which um, I'm on the board and have, I'm the past president of, we call ourselves Penn State Hampton Roads Chapter, but when we attend anything outside of our area, we have to say the Hampton Roads, Virginia chapter, so people in Pennsylvania or elsewhere know where we are yeah Catherine. Ooh, we just guess what oh we just made um 
the Penn State Alumni Association Facebook page yesterday. I had sent some pictures of our chapter mm-hmm. working on um, volunteering on Clean the Bay Day, mm-hmm. and they posted it yesterday. Oh, Woo! that's great. It was that's very great. exciting because with 140, I think, some um, alumni chapters and another 100 interest groups, I mean, it's that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, not pretty to mention cool. not to mention Penn State's got their own, you know, page and their football page and athletics and everything. A lot of Oh my gosh. Social media has so changed. There. I There's mean, one, so many. and one thing about social media is just it's connected all of us. I mean, people that, you know, were acquaintances meeting at a at a drugstore now are friends on and evolved. It's just amazing how social media has brought people together, but it can also be, you know, a rift as well. It can be a double-edged sword. Yeah, yeah. That's for sure. Because social media is not the news media, and I think it, it 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 gets that line gets blurred, and I don't like that whatsoever. Social media is more like you know the old days, two people, two neighbors talking across the fence. It's not necessarily news, and not necessarily vetted journalism. And oh well, that's just coming from my point of view. But yes, you're right. I mean, if and if we could just all be going back to what we said earlier, a little more civil on social media. I'm so discouraged by how many things just start out as a good topic and then people comment and then it devolves and it's like to something ugly and like, no, 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 no. Let's just be civil about this. Yeah. Law and order and civil civility. I mean, I remember one person tell me a long time ago, it takes two to argue. You can't argue by yourself, you know, and also it takes, but also Catherine, we have all this communication but still there's families and marriages that dissolve because of lack of communication. Well, one thing that I would like to just mention is that how, how much of a role you play in bringing the area together, bringing sports to people, and you know, creating the um, Hampton Road Sports Broadcasting Hall of Fame. I mm-hmm. mean, you, you do so much for this community, Greg, and I just wanted to mention that. You're awesome, Catherine, and, you know, that's why we love to use you as much as we can in all our media projects because you're so diversified. That's what I think the first thing that comes to me when I think about you is is diversity and you evolve and, you, you know, you, you're always looking for your next project, which is, re- which is really nice. Well, well, there's always a story to tell. That's for sure. There's some, and there's something interesting to be involved in, yep. whether it's um, nonprofit work or doing another commercial. I'm all for it. Yeah. All the best, and uh, all the best to you, and um, stay cool in these summer months, and we will definitely talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Greg. It was really a pleasure, and hello to Colleen as well. Thank you. All right, Catherine Barrett right there, formerly of Channel 13. She was an excellent guest on Sports Scene. We'll be back after these messages. Stay tuned. Mold, trash, rodents, snakeskin, even deceased animals. No, this isn't a Halloween shopping list. It's what might be under your house, in your crawl space. Schedule a free crawl space inspection with the Crawl Space Company and find out what's in your crawl space. Call 757-394-3494 to schedule your free inspection or visit thecrawlspacecompany.net. So, do you know what's in your crawl space? (laughs) It's now time for Greg's Highlights, presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Highlights, GJBTV.com, HRSMHOF.com, Hampton Roads Online Mall.com, GJBTV.com. Click the YouTube link on the homepage for archived audio and video content, including sports scene. Question of the day presented by GJBTV.com to our steam producer and general manager, Colleen. Colleen, as a family, have you gone out to eat much during the pandemic? No, not really. I mean, it's just busyness and everything, but fast food for the most part or delivery. Oh, very good. You can't do without that. All right. Sports scene will continue after these messages. The Newport News Greek Festival will take place August 28th through August 30th on the grounds of St. Constantine and Helen Greek Orthodox Church. The entire event will be a drive through edition, and we appreciate your continued support. Eat, drink, and celebrate authentic Greek culture on the peninsula. Celebrating a taste of Greece in Newport News with our drive through For more, log on to newportnewsgreekfestival.org. Opa! 
Catch up on archived editions of Sports Scene by going to gjbtv.com and clicking the YouTube image on the homepage. Now back to Sports Scene with Greg Bickavaris. And welcome back to Sports Scene at Greg Bick on Twitter, at Greg Bick on YouTube. Go to gjbtv.com, click the YouTube link for archived audio and video. Great to talk to uh, Brenda Tusing from the Royal Chocolate. Brenda, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. We're moving into uh, you know late July and August here, and of course, uh, talk about the the state of chocolate right the now. The state of chocolate. Uh, the state of chocolate is actually doing quite well, um, surprisingly in a way because things are crazy. But mm. um, but we are doing well. We're we're still here. Uh, we're in, of course, the Virginia Beach Town Center, right across from. Uh, William Sonoma and Pottery Barn next to the ABC store, don't you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, we do a lot of curb service and we do local deliveries for only $12 to Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Chesapeake, and even Portsmouth. So that's always helpful. People right now uh, sometimes are just are, are doing gifting in a different fashion. Uh, so we're able to help with that. We use DoorDash now and Grubhub. Uh, for a couple of items, so so we're doing okay. I want to get your experience. What has it been like with uh, Grubhub and DoorDash? You know, honestly, in the beginning, I, and they've come to us a number of times in the past, and I've been like, yeah, I don't think that's really for us. I, I didn't, I guess I couldn't see people sitting at home and ordering chocolate. I thought, well, you know, restaurants, food, that kind of thing I could see, but just not chocolate, but I've been quite surprised. Uh, we don't have our, our full store on there. We have, uh, you know, our fondue to go package. We have um, strawberries when when they're available, and uh, all of our apples and that kind of thing. And I am very surprised at how well that works for us. Yeah, because you're exactly right. Because your employees are trained by you and Terry, and have been for over ten years, and mm-hmm. you you can't really train a Grubhub or DoorDash person. Oh no, no, no! But they all they do, and it's great. I really kind of love it because we get a phone call, and then it's followed up with an email for what the person has ordered, and we put it together. And out the door it goes. They come pick it up, and we're done. Yeah, very good. Well, you talk about um, chocolate as well, and. Before we go more into it, you mentioned William Sonoma and your curbside. Your curb is perfect for curbside pickup. It, it, you know, it, it's so funny to me because ever since we opened, we had off we have offered curb service because people complained about the parking in town center. So we were like, okay, we can fix this. We'll offer curb service. So if you call us, you order, you pay for it over the phone. We bring it out to you when you pull up. And nobody really took advantage of that in all these years. A couple people did, but not many. And we'd offer it to them, and they'd say, oh, I what if I can't find a place to park? Then we'd say, well, we can do curb service. But now it's a big thing, um, and people are using it. And the same thing with our local delivery. You right. know, we have always delivered locally, but they're just discovering that now because it's something they need. Um, you know, we always ship when it's cooler out, but we can't ship right now, but... Yeah, so it's it's pretty interesting how people's needs change and something that's already been here but they never really paid any attention to it. Suddenly now they're like, oh, wait a minute, you can deliver that? Great. So, yeah. Right. And one key thing, too, is, you know, as you know, a lot of the businesses when you first got there are no longer there in the town center. But a lot of changes. You're right. But William Sonoma is nice because a few years ago I used to joke with you and say, you know, Brenda, what is that metal building right in front of you? It was would block your nice view, you know, but now somebody might go there and say, you know what, I might need some chocolate, too. Well, they have, uh, you know, the, uh, the Pottery Barn, William Sonoma, but also right across the street is uh, Cantina Laredo, mm-hmm. a new, uh, they call it modern Mexican restaurant. It's mm-hmm. a beautiful restaurant. And they have some outdoor seating. And one section of their, I'm looking at it right now, one section of their outdoor seating overlooks our store. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, the ABC store now being right beside us, that's pretty frequently busy. And so, yeah, the things that have come in right here at our end of the street uh, have brought us a lot of attention and visibility. I want to make sure the tourists hear that, too, as well, because a lot of tourists, they go, they think Virginia Beach only consists 
of the oceanfront. As a kid, pretty much I did as well. Sure. But there's so many. The 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 pure magic of Virginia Beach is the business community and the the different areas like Town Center and Hey Good, sure. Hey Good, and Kempsville. I love Kempsville. I think Kempsville is a great area, great neck. I mean, there's so many great parts of Virginia. I know, Beach. and you're right when people. And it's hard, you know. You come for for vacation, and certainly you're going to stay somewhere by the water. Sure. And so you're not really. Where do you go? You know, you don't really venture out. But there is so much more to Virginia Beach in all of those areas that you mentioned. Um, and Town Center is certainly uh, just a great place to walk around, shop, lots of restaurants, and, uh, you know, just, just a good good vibe. Um, yeah. yeah. Tree-lined streets. It's pretty. You know, the big fountain area. It's just beautiful. Yeah, folks, just remember, just because you're on Newtown Road, it's closer to get to the peninsula than it is to Pungo. I mean, it's that yeah. Virginia Beach is the biggest city in the state, you know. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's a really very vast. And people, you know, you go out towards, like you said, Pungo in that area, and you, you don't even know you're still in Virginia Beach. And I want to yeah. thank you. Thank you and Terry Bow because, yeah. you know, right now is a very tough time in our country with COVID and also yeah. civil issues. People go through personal drama. You've dealt with some stuff at the store. Sure. We all have toxic relationships relationships with some people we had to deal with so candy and chocolate is comforting you have no idea brenda well you know it's funny i i, I went to a restaurant the other night with friends and um you know you're you're asked to wear a mask we you know we ask you to wear a mask in here and you know, that sort of thing and and we're kind about it we're not you know ever ugly about it of course but i went to a restaurant and this man walked in without a, a mask and the wait staff said i'm sorry you have you know it's not their decision and he was belligerent and yeah. i thought no that is so unnecessary right. and we just don't get that in the chocolate world people no. are not we have had in 14 years maybe two rude people i swear to you it's That's remarkable true. it's like they come in here and it's nirvana and they're calm and they're here for chocolate right and it, so right. even in this environment we have been very very fortunate but i think sometimes too you know you just we give out a, a welcoming vibe, and so people are immediately happy with us, I think. Absolutely, because, you know, dessert and chocolate can definitely calm you down. That's mm-hmm. what I was going to ask you, you know, July and August, summer, hot heat, compared to, let's say, the comforting times of uh, October and the winter. You know, are people ordering different stuff? Um, they're com- well, so we do, we do a frozen hot chocolate, and every weekday from 2 to 4, they're two for one. And on Thursday, Thirsty Thursday, because I'm going to tell you about some new specials we're doing, sure. but that's one of them. So all day from 11 to 5, uh, we do two for one um, frozen beverages. So we do a lot of frozen beverages during the summer. But again, we still, you know, people still have birthdays, people still have anniversaries and, and events and things that they like to give our chocolate for. And so there's still that. There's the personal consumption. Um, you know, obviously we can't ship. And people do think differently because if they're coming for chocolate, they can't put that in their car and stop at the grocery store, for example, and then yeah. go home. They're going to have a melted mess on their hands. But, I mean, I carry a cooler in my car always because you know, I don't know if I'm going to stop at the grocery store or what I'm going to do. So I always have a cooler. So there's a lot of that kind of thing. We have sometimes filled little bags with ice so people can keep things cool till they get at home. You just do what you got to do. You know, it's funny you said that because that's a great point for tourists, too. My younger sister's got a seven-year-old daughter. So she, when they go out, it's a big deal. She's got to have her first aid kit. You know, got to, when they go on vacation, they got to have a ba- all types of bags. As yeah, you know, you've yeah. raised kids. It's the same thing for doing business every day. You got to have a cooler to keep things cool. You might go in your house three or four times forgetting something because you need yeah. so much to get out of the house. Just to get out of the house, yeah. right. You're right. But it's it's important. So talking to uh, Brenda Tusing right here from the Royal Chocolate as well. And, of course, you mentioned the beverages. I mean, I can't think of anything more delightful to cool you down in this 100-degree weather. There's so many flavors. Mm-hmm. We, we have an orange, like a cream sickle flavor. And, the, of course, you know, the milk chocolate and the uh, white chocolate. We can add Oreos or strawberries. They're fabulous. Mm-hmm. But to that, I want to tell you real quickly. Too. Sure. So we started sure. this thing. We're every weekday. We're not open on Monday right now, mm-hmm. but every day during the week, Tuesday is Tribute Tuesday. So we're doing a free truffle for first responders, 
military, and teachers. It's very simple. Just come in and tell us, and we'll give you a free truffle. Wednesdays, we're doing Win Win Wednesday. It's double points because we have a loyalty program where you get one point for every dollar you spend. And it adds up to things like free chocolate, a free apple, um, a $10 gift card, that sort of thing. So we're doing double points on Wednesdays. Thursday, Thirsty Thursday. So we're doing our two-for-one beverages Mm -hmm. from 11 to 5. And Friday is Fondue Friday, $5 off any fondue. And that's whether you have it in store or to go. Mm. Very nice. So those are our weekly Wow wow Your Weekday specials. And they're all great (laughs) pick-me-ups. They're they're all great pick-me-ups, Brenda. Yes, they are. They are. They can really pick up your mood and your spirit, too. They can. They can. If you're feeling down, come see us. We'll cheer you up the minute you get in the door. Right. During normal times, you're also open seven days a week. But right now, these are not normal times. So, you know. No, they're very abnormal times. So we've had to curtail our hours. Monday, we're closed. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're open 10 to 6. Friday and Saturday, 10 to 9.30. And then Sunday, 12 to 5. I was going to ask you about this, too, because you, you're, you're the retail queen of Hampton Roads, that when you go to some of these stores, especially convenience stores, you see these impulse buys, you see them at grocery stores. Mm-hmm. My godmother used to like to buy the National Enquirer when she went to you know a grocery store because it was right. just right in front of her, even though she's not interested in that, but it was right there in front <laughs> there of her. There you got to buy it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It could be you know Slim Jims or candies. Mm-hmm. Have, you, sure. have you thought about doing that, or y'all, y'all have already pretty much kept straight to your guns chocolate? We, we, you know, we just at the very beginning, we were going to be chocolate, right? And we were going to be good chocolate, right? And we have some very inexpensive items. You sure. can, for under five dollars, have a nice little gift bag of chocolates. You can buy, you know, we have some people come in, especially now while it's hot and things are melty, they'll come in and get one or two pieces from the case of their favorite chocolates. Very inexpensive, mm-hmm. but it's good chocolate, right? And we we ventured one time a little bit into like gift items, and, and they just didn't sell, to be honest with you. Sure. It's not who we are. Right. Right. No, you're, you're a store. I mean, you don't We're, see... I know we do you know, gift baskets, which are beautiful, mm-hmm. um, but we don't get into the gifty items or, you know, magazines or cheap candy. We just don't do it. Right. You're not Dollar Tree or Five Below. I mean, you know, it's but you do have some no. very inexpensive items as we well. We do. Oh, you can come in and really, for very little money, um, have a... And even a gift. I mean... You know, six dollars, five dollars. You can have a you can have a nice gift. Um, so there are some. We're not we're not expensive. Uh, we just are good. Yeah, because you see a lot of the sodas and the water is right there. Yeah, at the, we at have, the, and we have well, even our sodas. Like we don't have Coke and Pepsi, and mm-hmm. you know we carry things that other people don't carry. We keep um, like the and I, I don't really know what the big deal about it is, but people love the Vernon's. Um, the ginger ale, oh, for it's example, great. Great. you know, and we yeah. have the Sprecher sodas and uh, cheer wine, uh, which is not a wine because we can't do alcohol, but we have things that are different. You know, we have water, of course, but um, so we, we try to be a little bit unique because we don't want to be, when you come in here, we don't want you to see something that you see everywhere. We right. want to be unique. We want to be an experience. To introduce people to new things, right? And folks, if nothing's open during the holidays to go to a museum, you can go right there because Brendan and Terry decorate so well during the holidays. And we have so much fun with it. I oh, mean, right yeah. now summer's kind of tough because you know there's nothing really big happening, and so sure. the store looks the same day after day. But boy, I'll tell you what. Let fall show up, and here we go. Yeah, and i got to give kudos to you and Terry for both doing a lot of great Facebook Live stuff lately, too, as well. We're trying. You have to stay out there. You know, people, a lot of people are home, and they're not going out. And um, so they tend to forget about you. That's very normal. Mm-hmm. They're trying to stay relevant, as they say. And, um, you know, when this thing turns around, which it will. And, and I am very grateful. We have, I think the one thing... After all of these years, we have built up a really loyal following Mm -hmm. of people, and they try very hard to shop with us and be supportive. Yeah. Um, And I really appreciate that because, you know, not everybody has that. If you're a brand-new business, I can't imagine how people are surviving. Um, So we do really, 
you know, as well as can be expected for this time. It's tricky and it's sometimes scary. Right. But we're going to be okay. Yep. Almost emotional because you can uh, you can follow them on Facebook on mm-hmm. on yep. uh, all the different platforms, Twitter and so and and Pinterest and so much social media. Sure. But uh, I got to ask you one retail question because you're involved with retail a lot. Okay. There have been some businesses that have not made it in the town center. I think. One issue was too many of those big restaurants with big rents, and um, I'm not going to mention any names because I love them all and I'm neutral. Mm-hmm. But um, do you think that could be part of like overload sometimes too, Brenda? Could be part of what? Overload a little bit too much of uh, one thing. Oh, you mean the big bigger stores, yeah, bigger restaurants, the bigger um, rents, the big with the big rents. You know, I'll be honest with you, I. You know, like Taste just came in. Um, We have a little uh, shop here called Gelato. Fabulous sandwiches and um, salads. And like I said, Cantina Laredo just got here a couple months ago. They do a great job with Mexican. Um, So, yeah, we still have the Bravos and the Cheesecake Factories and the big guys. Um, I would love to see. Now, Quirks is here. They're a little on the smaller side. Um, I would love to see more local business Mm -hmm. here and more local restaurants. I think that's a neat flavor that downtown Norfolk, for example, has developed. And I would like to see more of that here, but I'm not the owner or the developer or the leasing agent. (laughs) Right. So, um, but, you know, know, when you stop and look and you really walk around town center, you'll see a lot of smaller places that maybe you don't really notice just driving by. You know, cold press is beside us. Um, they have some of the um, the juices and, you know, things like that. They're on the small side, more coffee drinks. We do coffee, but we don't get involved in all the espressos and mm-hmm. the cappuccinos mm-hmm. like they do. Um, so there's more here than you think. It's not all the big guys, although there are a lot of them. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, save me some of those cashews. I'll probably be coming by there a little bit later. Okay, we'll be right here. Sports Scene, Hampton Roads' premiere interview show with Greg Picaveras, each Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11. And you look at that, 4-4 four and four at home, which is just average, 4-3-1 four, and one on the road. I mean, you're not going to win any games like that. They were not the same team after they beat the Packers, yet the Packers were a totally different team. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter, at Greg Bick, and listen weekly as Greg interviews distinguished guests with excellent commentary and insight. Sports Scene, Saturdays at 10 a.m. on the Lighthouse 100.1 FM. You are listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. Now, back to Greg. Folks, we all deal with different types of personalities in life, but this was a really good clip from a former Chicago Bear football player and coach as well when he coached the 49ers, how we can deal with toxic people at the workplace and sports in all walks of life. Here's Mike Singletary. Vernon, Vernon just uh, it was something that I told everybody at the very beginning of the week. I will not tolerate um, players that think it's about them when it's about the team. And um, we, cannot make, we cannot make decisions that cost the team and then come off the sideline and it's nonchalant. No. You know what? I, I, th- this is how I believe, okay? I'm from the old school. I believe this. I would rather play with 10 people and just get penalized all the way until we got to do something else, rather than play with 11 when I know that right now that person is not sold out to be a part of this team. It is more about them than it is about the team. I cannot play with them, cannot win with them, cannot coach with them, can't do it. What tees you off? Presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Colleen, sometimes, you know, I'm very good at making decisions, but when you're trying to get candy at a store or making a decision on a menu, it's very difficult. You know that. You can't, even though you've seen the menu before, you always are intrigued by something else. But when you're ordering something for a group of people and a waiter talks you out of ordering more food, saying, you've had enough, I think that's going to be enough food. I've never heard anybody tell me that before. I have never heard that. Usually they're suggesting other items. Exactly. Trying to upsell. When a so-called seafood entree has 90% vegetables in it, surrounded by it. Oh, okay. Lots of vegetables. Yeah. Well, vegetables are good for you. 
I like well done food like steaks and burgers, not rare food. Um, medium. I, yeah. I would be more medium. Like a little pink? A little pink. A little pink, okay. Bar flies. Of course, you're not seeing any of them, thank goodness now. People that uh, hang around bars, but you want to keep social distancing at restaurants. For sure, definitely keep your distance. Erratic and inconsistent people and friendships. Very difficult. Very difficult, never knowing what's going to happen. And on that note, uh, people who ghost and continue to ghost. Oh, goodness. People who disappear. Absolutely. Well, they disappear, let them disappear physically and mentally as well. Also, too, um, controlling spouses. That's never good. Oh, very difficult. That's an unfortunate situation. Yeah, when one spouse wants to know what the other spouse is doing 24-7, or even when they track you on your phone, that's not a marriage. You've got to have some trust. Yes, absolutely. And independence, too, as well. All right, that's what tees me off. The Newport News Greek Festival will take place August 28th through August 30th on the grounds of Saints Constantine and Helen Greek Orthodox Church. The entire event will be a drive through edition, and we appreciate your continued support. Eat, drink, and celebrate authentic Greek culture on the peninsula. Celebrating a taste of Greece in Newport News with our drive through For more, log on to NewportNewsGreekFestival.org. Opa! Mold. Trash rodents, snakeskin, even deceased animals. No, this isn't a Halloween shopping list. It's what might be under your house, in your crawl space. Schedule a free crawl space inspection with the Crawl Space Company and find out what's in your crawl space. Call 757-394-3494 to schedule your free inspection or visit thecrawlspacecompany.net. So, do you know what's in your crawl space? <laughs> Want to thank our guests today, Catherine Barrett and also Brenda Tusing, Sports Scene. For more, go to gjbtv.com. Thank you to our producer, Colleen, and general manager as well. Hope everyone is staying cool this summer. I'm Greg Bicavaris. We'll talk to you soon. Sports Scene, Hampton Roads premiere interview show with Greg Bicavaris, each Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11. And you look at that, 4-4 four and four at home, which is just average, 4-3-1 and one on the road. I mean, you're not going to win any games like that. They were not the same team after they beat the Packers, yet the Packers were a totally different team. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter, at Greg Bick, and listen weekly as Greg interviews distinguished guests with excellent commentary and insight. Sports Scene, Saturdays at 10 a.m. on the Lighthouse 100.1 FM. On the next edition of Sports Scene, we'll talk about how sports and broadcasting have been affected by this pandemic. It's been going on since March, but a lot of broadcasters are not one location. For example, network television baseball, the announcers are calling in from a studio far away from a game. And we're going to talk to a gentleman from ESPN who's dealing with that and will deal with that for the fall as well. Life is definitely changing on the next edition of Sports Scene in August. The Newport News Greek Festival will take place August 28th through August 30th on the grounds of Saints Constantine and Helen Greek Orthodox Church. The entire event will be a drive through edition, and we appreciate your continued support. Eat, drink, and celebrate authentic Greek culture on the peninsula. Celebrating a taste of Greece in Newport News with our drive through For more, log on to NewportNewsGreekFestival.org. Opa! Here's important new information from the Diabetes Solution Center for you, a family member, or a loved one suffering with diabetes. If you have lost your provider or if you need a provider for diabetic supplies, you may qualify to receive your diabetic testing supplies now with little or no out-of-pocket cost, regardless of your age. All you need is Medicare or private insurance to be potentially eligible. Call the Diabetes Solution Center right now for details. Just takes a couple of minutes. Our friendly, knowledgeable agents will give you free, no-obligation information, handle all the insurance paperwork, and make sure your supplies are delivered directly to your door for free. Call U.S. Medical Supply 24 hours a day. 800-520-8629. 800-520-8629. 800-520-8629. Call right now. 800-520-8629. 
Sports Scene, Hampton Roads premiere interview show with Greg Bicaveras each Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11. And you look at that, 4-4 four and four at home, which is just average, 4-3-1 four, and one on the road. I mean, you're not going to win any games like that. They were not the same team after they beat the Packers, yet the Packers were a totally different team. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter, at Greg Bick, and listen weekly as Greg interviews distinguished guests with excellent commentary and insight. Sports Scene, Saturdays at 10 a.m. on the Lighthouse 100.1 FM.